I know it might seem extremely hard to believe, but the movie that we're looking at today did not come out in 2009. It actually came out this year in 2024. Let's go back in time a little bit. A long time ago, there was this very small genre of movies. What if cartoon character but in the real world. Movies that answered questions that were on every single one of our minds. What if Alvin and the Chipmunks were in the real world? What if Fat Albert was in the real world? What if Garfield was in the real world? What if Looney Tunes were in the real world? What if Yogi Bear was in the real world? What if the Smurfs were in the real world? The list goes on. These movies were pretty big around the 2000s and early 2010s commercially, but very rarely were they successful critically. After the early 2010s though, they would just stop making these movies, I guess. You would never hear or see anything about these movies going forward. Despite that though, this micro-genre is not completely dead. Every once in a while, you do get a new movie in this genre, and it always feels off looking at it nowadays in the 2020s. Remember a few years ago when they made a Tom and Jerry movie? Where they had like Tom and Jerry in the real world in New York? Like what the hell was that all about? This movie came out in early 2021, and so it was like negatively affected by the pandemic. It didn't really have a theatrical release, I don't think, and it was instead largely released on the streaming. I've never seen this movie movie, nor do I ever intend to watch it, but I remember it getting pretty poor reviews, and then now it's just, no one remembers it. It's just a thing that exists. You never see anyone talk about the Tom and Jerry movie from 2021. Like, that's nobody's favorite movie or anything like that. It's not even just the pandemic, to be honest. If the pandemic never happened and the movie got a proper theatrical release, for sure it would have been a box office flop. I cannot imagine anyone willingly going to the theaters to watch the 10 year too late a Tom and Jerry movie where they're in the real world. That's just embarrassing, I I'm sorry. Besides the obvious flop that is Tom and Jerry though, rather bafflingly, there are a few movies that fit this criteria, but like, they're actually pretty successful. And now I know this might seem weird for me to say that like, oh, these movies fit the criteria. It might seem weird for me to lump these alongside Alvin and the Chipmunks and the Sim but like, j just hear me out, okay? Just hear me out. The Sonic movies and the Barbie movie, they fit the criteria. What if Sonic was in the real world? What if Barbie was in the real world? You know, that sort of thing. Yes, I get it. Sonic is a video game character and Barbie is a doll. They're not cartoon characters. I don't care. It's the same general principle. Now, I'm not going to point to this as being why these movies are good, why they end up being successful flukes within this genre, this basically dead movie genre at that. But it's something that I feel is interesting to point out in the context of the movie that we're looking at in this video. Even though these movies follow the basic plot of what if cartoon character was in the real world, this movie concept genre plot thing that has been dead since the early 2010s, even though these movies follow that plot line, they still feel like modern movies, if that makes sense. Like the whole thing with Barbie is that it's like, like, oh, what if Barbie was in the real world? But then, like, it feels like a movie that would come out in this day and age. Like, it feels like a modern movie. It feels like a movie that would come out in 2023 and not 2007. I, uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, because you'll see why, I cannot say the same for the movie that we're going to be talking about in this video. So I'm sure most of you watching this are at the very least familiar with the old children's book Harold and the Purple Crayon. For those that don't know, this is a book about a boy named Harold who has a purple crayon. Very insightful, I know. He uses his purple crayon to draw whatever he wants and everything he draws becomes real. He could interact with it. So if he draws a purple circle, 
circle, for example, he could play with it as if it was a ball. You know, that sort of thing. I read this book most likely when I was extremely young. I know for a fact I did read this book at some point, but I must have been super young. This was probably back during, like, kindergarten. I don't know. I can't say I have any, like, childhood nostalgic memories of this book, even though I know for a fact that I did read it as a kid. And I'm not gonna go and defend this book with all of my life like it's the most important thing in the world to me. I'm not gonna cry about how they could ruin such a beloved classic book or anything like that because I know for a fact it's it's not that serious. It's f***ing Harold and the Purple Crayon. Besides, I have a far more sophisticated taste in literature. I have no time for these pathetic children's books like Harold and the Purple Crayon. No thank you, I'm good. But anyways, they made a movie about Harold and the Purple Crayon. And it fits this criteria. It is one of those generic what if cartoon character was in the real world movies. And it came out this year, in 2024. And this is the poster for it. I kid you not, this is the poster for the movie. This is a real movie that came out in 2024. This looks like a fake joke poster that someone would make online for like laughs, but I kid you not, this is a real movie. This is a poster for a real movie that came out earlier this year. This is not a joke poster, nor is this some weird obscure movie from 2011 that I'm talking about. This is a movie that came out only a few months ago in August of 2024. I went into this movie with the highest of expectations. I remember coming across the trailer for this movie prior to it coming out, and I'm like, what the hell is this? This looks like complete garbage, and I am ready for it. I knew that this was gonna be a bad movie, but, like, I had a feeling it was gonna be my kind of bad movie. Everything about this movie just lured me into it. The generic cartoon character enters the real world plot Plot that's just embarrassing to do now in 2024. The fact that Harold in this movie is not a little boy like in the original book, but is instead a grown man. The fact that f***ing Shazam of all people is playing Harold in this movie. It was just, it's a recipe for disaster. How could I not watch this movie, honestly? How could I miss out on the biggest movie of the year? Screw Dune 2 and screw Deadpool and Wolverine. This is where it's at. And so, on a random Sunday night, I went to my local theater and I prepared for the greatest movie experience that I would ever endure in my life. My local movie theater has nine auditoriums in it. The first one or two, maybe three auditoriums are where like the big massive blockbusters play. Sometimes though, I watch movies in the ninth and final auditorium, and most of the time it's like the who cares movies, you know? Sometimes they play like super obscure, like low budget, no chance of being successful, but at the same time not trying to be successful movies, I would watch them in theater nine. Sometimes I would watch movies that had already been out for a while and like now they don't have the same sort of steam that they once had. With this one though, this was a who cares movie. This was a movie that they would just dump into theaters and call it a day. I go inside, there's barely anyone in the theater. I'm not gonna lie, I think it would have been so much funnier if I was literally the only person in the entire auditorium that watched it. I understand it would have been depressing as well, kind of. The idea that, like, I am all alone on a random Sunday night watching f***ing Harold and the Purple Crayon. Everyone else in, like, the front auditoriums are watching, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine and Inside Out 2 and whatever, and I'm over here watching f***ing being Harold and the Purple Crayon all alone by myself. For better or worse though, I was not alone watching Harold and the Purple Crayon. I was not alone. There was a mother in this theater with her kid. The mother had a baby and from time to time the baby would cry, which is something that always adds to the experience whenever you're watching a sh kids movie in theaters. The baby didn't cry all that much, but he did cry from time to time. There were these two guys sitting next to me, like a few seats apart from me, 
and I could just tell they were they did not care about the movie at all. I could very clearly hear these two guys talking. I had no idea what they were saying, but like they were loud enough to be like noticeable. They were like on their phones talking about like I don't know whatever on their phone. I, it's probably none of my business, but like it was clear they did not care about the movie at all. Like I believe one guy was showing the other guy something on his phone, and like they were laughing about it, and like they just did not care. And these aren't like gen alpha you know brain rot ipad kids no these were like grown men these two guys were probably older than me to be honest and then like kind of early to midway into the movie maybe like 25 to 30 minutes into the movie they got up and they left i never saw them again and that just added to the experience that just made it even funnier the whole time in the theater i'm just laughing at this movie because of how bad it is i'm trying to be respectful in the event that there was someone there that genuinely wanted to watch this movie and was like excited for it but i made it pretty abundantly clear watching the movie that like i was not taking this stupid thing seriously it was it was hilarious to me one of the funniest bad movies i had ever seen i have to share my theater experience watching harold and the purple crayon in order for you to truly understand what makes this movie so special to me the idea that on a random Sunday night, I decide to go into a mostly empty auditorium at the very back of my local movie theater to watch a crappy kids movie that would end up flopping at the box office. While everyone else was jam-packed watching Deadpool and Wolverine, I'm over here watching Harold and the Purple Crayon. Clearly, I have my priorities set straight. So what is it that makes Harold and the Purple Crayon the funniest bad movie of 2024 well allow me to explain the first five-ish minutes of this movie i'm not sure they're actually kind of good on ironically this movie starts off 2D animated, giving a brief summary of, like, Harold and his purple crayon. It's told in this cartoony 2D animation style, and I think it's great. This It makes me realize this movie probably would have worked better if it was animated. Of course, as you'll soon find out, you'll realize this movie is even better in live action. It then cuts to Harold all grown up now, and you know what? It actually kind of works when it's animated. Having Harold be an adult now instead of a little boy, it still works when it's animated. It's charming the first few minutes of the movie. It reminds me so much of like the Curious George movie from 2006. Like it has the same sort of charm as that movie. If they made the whole movie like this, it probably would have been unironically good. But of course, <laughs> the movie ended up going a very different route. One that may or may not actually be better. At the beginning of this movie, there is a narrator telling the story of Harold and who he is and his purple crayon and whatnot. Harold eventually becomes self-aware of this narrator and begins to question everything he's created, he created with his purple crayon. But then, who created him? Who created Harold himself? The narrator accidentally mentions the real world, and as a result of this, Harold wants to go into the real world to find out who created him. And there you have it. There's the reason why Harold and the Purple Crayon is in the real world now. That's the excuse. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of an existential reason I've never seen before. When, it, when it's something like the Smurfs, it's like, oh, the Smurfs are in the real world now because of some magical mum jumbo but with this it's like weirdly f***ing existential you got Harold over here wondering everything I create is with this purple crayon but then who created me I've never seen anything like it in these movies you know it's it's kind of a good point to raise in universe but it's so unexpected and it adds to the hilarity of this movie and so Harold enters the real world and becomes Zachary Levy I'm going to assume that this movie is part of Zachary Levy trying to cope with the fact that Shazam 2 flopped hard and that he is most likely not coming back to play Shazam in the new DC reboot with James Gunn. It's worth noting as well that Harold has two best friends in this cartoon world, a porcupine and a moose, and so they go into the real world as well. The moose is just this random guy, nothing special about him at all, he's just a normal guy. And then the porcupine is, for whatever reason, she goes into the real world and she becomes this like punk goth girl for some f 
reason i don't know it's so stupid and it makes no sense at all but it adds to the funny bad nature of this movie oh yeah speaking of which i brought up how when the movie was animated for its first few minutes it was charming having harold as an adult yeah that charm is completely gone instead you just get this weird surreal f feeling seeing Zachary Levy act like a complete man child the narrator brought up an old man created Harold and so now he's desperately trying to find the old man that created him and that's when we get introduced to the other main characters a boy and his mom and they could not be any more generic when it comes to like these movies the boy's dad died because of course he did and so both him and his mom are sad about it by accident, they end up coming across Harold and the Moose, and offers them to stay with them until Harold can find who created him. These two characters are about as generic as you could possibly get in these cartoon characters in the real world movies. But again, that generic quality adds to the funny bad nature of this movie. I brought up how this movie, like the general idea of this movie, you know, cartoon character enters the real world, whatever, it doesn't feel like a movie from 2024, but it's like, not only does the storyline not feel like it's from 2024, just the whole vibe watching this movie. You could sandwich this movie in between Alvin and the Chipmunks and the Smurfs, and like, I would assume they all came out around the same time. You could tell me that this movie came out in 2011, and I would easily believe you. This movie does not feel like a 2024 movie in the slightest, and it's not even just the concept of it the idea of it no just the way it feels the way everything about this movie feels it just feels like generic kids movie from 2009 so then harold ends up finding the house of crockett johnson the actual creator of the original harold in the purple crayon book as Harold walks up to the front door, he is informed that Crockett Johnson had unfortunately passed away a long time ago, which means that Harold will never be able to meet his creator. This causes Harold to become even more, like, existential and depressed, which, again, just, it's unexpected and unfitting for this whole movie. You have him going on about how he's just a dumb drawing made to make other dumb drawings, and then the moment he says that, the movie and porcupine just disappear like that like thanos just snapped his finger with the infinity gauntlet and this is supposed to be the cliche generic third act sad moment that a lot of kids movies have and instead it is the most unintentionally hilarious thing i've ever seen in my life i'm over here in the theater and it's like i am unable to conceal my laughter because there is absolutely no way in hell that i'm taking any of this stuff seriously because it's all so f goofy so let's talk about the villain of this movie library gary throughout the movie gary is trying to get his epic fantasy book published but unfortunately nobody wants to publish his book in the third act gary obtains harold's purple crayon and decides if no one wants to publish my fantasy novel then i'll make it a reality myself and so the last few minutes of the movie is this epic fantasy battle between Harold and Library Gary. And now usually, in these cartoon character enters the real world movies, the villains usually end up being the best part about them easily. You have David Cross as Ian in Alvin and the Chipmunks, and you have Hank Azaria as Gargamel in the Smurfs, and both easily carry their respective movies. Library Gary is a bit different in that instead of being the best part of Harold and the Purple Crayon, he is part of the reason why Harold and the Purple Crayon is the best movie ever made. You will never find a more well-written, genius villain in any other movie. A villain that puts Heath Ledger's Joker to shame. Oh yeah, it's also implied throughout the movie that he has a crush on the kid's mom, which leads to a lot of, like, really f 
fucking awkward jokes and it just overall adds to the experience of this movie this beautiful goddamn train wreck of a movie anyways good guy beats bad guy very cliche very obvious very predictable harold decides to draw an alternate world for gary to live in where he could live inside of the fantasy world that he created so there you go the villain gets redeemed everyone lives happily ever after harold the moose the porcupine they go back into their cartoon world we get a little bit more of that charming 2d animation and then the movie just ends this movie is fascinating to me because this does not feel like a movie from 2024 this feels like a movie from 2011 i've said that a million times already but it's true you watch this movie and it feels like a generic kids movie from 2011 this is the only movie i can think of that is both generic as all hell and funny bad at the same time it's funny bad because of how generic it is because it's like an outdated form of generic this could easily pass off as a crappy kids movie from 2009 except it came out this year in 2024 imagine if this movie came out in 2011 while the smurfs came out in 2024 my opinions on both movies would be completely different they'd be the opposite i would look at harold and the purple crayon as a crappy generic kids movie and then i would look at the smurfs as this funny bad outdated movie if this movie actually did come out in the late 2000s or early 2010s it would be nowhere near as funny that's not even getting into like the many other aspects of this movie just the constant unintentionally funny moments of this movie the fact that the three main characters of this movie are zachary levy having a mental breakdown off-brand kevin hart and this random punk goth girl it's just what the f is this movie honestly oh yeah and you have the generic real world kid and mom because of course they have to be there it's the most cliche generic unoriginal kids movie you could possibly think of and it's funny because of when it came out this feels like something that would come out alongside Horrid Henry the movie or some shit like that, you know? This feels like a crappy, forgotten movie that I would watch as a kid in the early 2010s, you know? This movie reminds me of... I, I apologize in advance for reminding y'all of this movie's existence, but I have to bring it up to remind myself that I am not crazy and that this was a real movie that happened judy moody and the not bummer summer yes this was a movie that i watched when i was a kid no i have no idea why i watched it as a kid i just did okay actually you know what i'm gonna throw another one at y'all do y'all remember when they made a three stooges movie remember when that happened remember when they made a three stooges movie where they had like mo be part of jersey shore yeah that was a real movie that actually happened that wasn't a weird surreal fever dream that you had when you were six no this was a real movie a real honest to god movie that actually exists i kid you not if this video gets 200 likes i will make videos on both of these movies because i want to further convince myself that i am not crazy and that these were real movies that actually happened i want to spread the word out there that these were actual movies these weren't weird fever dreams that we all had in the early 2010s harold and the purple crayon is objectively a terrible movie and and yet I enjoyed it more than half of the movies that have come out this year in 2024. Honest to God, I enjoyed this movie more than Inside Out 2 and Deadpool and Wolverine. I know, I know, those are objectively better movies, but I got more enjoyment out of Harold and the Purple Crayon than from either of these movies. This movie made me laugh more than Deadpool and Wolverine. It made me laugh for all of the wrong reasons, of course, but it made me laugh nonetheless. There are tons of other movies like Deadpool and Wolverine now in 2024. With Harold and the Purple Crayon, it's so like outdated and like generic that it, the idea of such a movie coming out in 2024 makes it funnier than Deadpool and Wolverine. I know that Deadpool and Wolverine is objectively the better movie, but I got more enjoyment out of Harold and the Purple Crayon in part because it's a worse movie. I already pissed off the Redditors when I said that I didn't like Deadpool and Wolverine all that 
that much, I might as well piss them off even more. Considering how cynical film discourse is nowadays, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually the idea of the guilty pleasure, the so bad it's good movie, just completely disappears. Eventually, you will no longer be able to like a bad movie, while also acknowledging that it is indeed a bad movie. I can only imagine how joyless and cynical people would be about The Room or Birdemic if they came out today in 2024. I do not recommend this movie as a kid's movie. I do not recommend that you show your kids this movie or anything like that, but I highly recommend it if you want to see a funny bad kid's movie that does not feel like it would come out in 2024. I have seen a lot of terrible movies this year, but none of them have been funny bad. Sometimes you get a movie like Madam Web that has the potential to be funny bad, but ultimately it just leaves you disappointed and unsatisfied. Harold and the Purple Crayon is the funny bad movie that I was waiting for all year long. This is the hilarious garbage that I was expecting out of Madam Web and Megamind vs. the Doom Syndicate. And so even though this movie is objectively garbage, I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it more than half of the movies I've seen this year. That probably says a lot about my taste in movies, but to be honest, I think this says a lot more about the current state of cinema, when this is one of the better movies I've seen this year. This... To the surprise of no one, this movie did it terrible at the box office. This was the first of three critical and commercial failures that would come out in August of 2024. In addition to that, all three movies would be released onto digital not even a month after they were released in theaters, which I have never seen that happen before with a movie. To have not one, not two, but three movies do this bad that they just just yank them out of theaters almost immediately after. I wanted to make videos talking about Borderlands and The Crow, but I decided against it. Borderlands it comes so close to being the worst movie of the year, but I don't think it would make for a very interesting video, on account of the fact that, number one, I've actually never played a single Borderlands game before in my life, and number two, everyone else has already talked about why Borderlands is bad, and so I feel like there's not really much for me to add to the table. And then The Crow was just kind of boring. It's not even like an awful movie necessarily, it's just bleh. Like, yeah, there's rare funny bad moments in it, sometimes it could be unironically enjoyable, but most of the time it's just super boring and I don't think it would make for a funny video. At some point, I wanted to make a video covering all three of these movies, the three box office flops of August 2024, but then I decided, nah, I don't want to do that. I would much rather focus on the only one of the three movies that I think would make for a good video. And so here we are. I could kind of see this movie becoming a future cult classic because of its funny bad nature. The fact that barely anyone knows about this movie's existence just speaks volumes to me. But it also serves as a reminder that some things should be left behind in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Anyways, that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to like, and if you're new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing as it would be great appreciated. Thank you everyone for watching this video and I will see you all next time. Adios.